Hey, I hope you're having a good day today. So I was going to share this quick little uh, clip. I thought it was pretty funny. I got a bug in Molten Core. These little uh, bros that you are supposed to kill. They were like the Hydra. When, uh, when you kill one, two will come. I thought it was pretty funny. Uh, at one point there was like almost 700 mobs spawned. So enjoy this real quick and we'll get into the main feature, the leveling here. In just a moment. At this point, I realized I'd messed up. <laughs> I just wanted to very quickly get everybody on the same page as far as how experience works in game. So, as you can see here on my screen, I'm going to pull a bunch of the same named mobs very close to my little bro here. Okay? Very, very close. And see how close he is? Okay, he gets 3625 experience per mob. But if you just walk across the bridge, it's this short of a distance difference. Let me get unstunned. Just across the bridge. Now I get 7025 experience for Ravener, which is basically the same mob. And then I'll kill a uh, another hungerer here in just a second and show you. So 7,026 experience for just being further away. As you see here in the bottom right screen, I'm taking my paladin pretty far away and he's still getting experience at this point. Right, this is basically the edge of the normal minimap. I've got an add-on that makes it extra huge, but that's pretty far away, but there is a finite distance. So as I keep killing the mobs, get this guy down. Still gets experience, okay? But as I work my way further and further away, for example, this corner, which is fairly far away, you do not get experience. So there is definitely a finite distance as far as how far is too far. It's beyond the minimap, tracking, and then a little bit extra. So you'll know the person is too close to get full experience if you can obviously cast on them is a good indicator. And if they are too far away, you won't see them on the minimap anymore. Like they'll be way, way zoomed out as far out on your minimap as you can get. If you can't see them anymore, you're probably not getting experience. So that's kind of the Goldilocks zone. So something else that's fairly interesting if you see here on my screen, now I have two guys that I'm boosting. They're, they're level 64, and they get the same amount of experience as when there was just two people in the party. So you see here on the screen, he gets 65, 24 experience, which is basically the same number that I got when that, there was only two guys in this dungeon, okay? And just to make sure and to show you that it works the same exact way, I'm killing this mob way too close, you know? And he gets 3150 and 3150. Okay, so I haven't had time yet to test this with three or four characters, but that is how I've always powered level dudes. Um, I just did it because the it cuts down on running. But now, so if you go online, you can find things that say, this is how experience works. This is the formula for experience and blah, blah, blah. But all of those basically say that, you know, there is no difference between distance of where you are in relation to the mob being killed. And then also they say that if there's two people versus three people in the party, it will change the amount of experience. And there's a complicated formula with a bunch of stuff. But as I just showed on the screen, it doesn't matter if there's two or three people in the party, little guys will get the same amount of experience. So I'll put the text of the guide here at the start. And then if you want to follow along or skip back to any of the parts, I will also timestamp all this for you.
Okay, so let's get into the main event. You've been very patient. So I'm going to assume that you are a troll or an orc or a tauren. And if you are an undead or a blood elf, you'll probably want to do a little bit different of a start. Um, you can quest and then go to uh, Scarlet Monastery and do all those instances. And then once you go to Zulfarak, from that point on, the guide should be the same. So let's assume, just for this guide's sake, that you are a troll, orc, or a tauren, okay? And the first thing you're going to do, the first little starter zone, okay? Starter zone. I'm going starter zone, okay? And then make your way to Ragefire Castle. So you want to go from Ragefire Chasm, and then I go out the front door of Org, across the street, across this little uh, stream, down here, grab this flight path, grab that flight path, knock this instance out, this instance. You can jump off the cliff here if you have a bubble, or you can leave the group to teleport you here to the graveyard so you don't have to run back out. Um, and then you want to make your way to Zulfarak right here. And then you want to mole machine, so the little uh, dire brew remote, or you can make your way to you know, Blasted Lands and go to Blackrock Depths. So once you're done with Blackrock Depths, you want to go to Outland. So use your Hearthstone, go back to Orgrimmar, you know, go to Outlands, grab this quest on the other side of the portal and turn it in here and then take the flight path to Thralmar, go to Hellfire, blast those instances, go over here, Ring of Blood, and then you can hearth again to get you back to Orgrimmar, and then you're going to go to Northrend. And once you're in Northrend, I do all of these little quests just in this first zone. So the ones that take you on the coast right here and the few starting ones, I don't do the ones that take you up here and I don't even do these ones, okay? So I just do this little starting area and then as soon as I hit 74, I make my way here to these instances, the spider, Azul Nurub and all of those. And I grab those quests because they're nice experience if you do but I like to grab those quests and maybe take a little break and do like one of these instances just to break it up and change it up. And those instance quests give a ton of experience. And if you could solo those, that's a nice little spot. If you can't solo those, don't worry about it. And can you continue your way to Agmar's Hammer? And you want to set your Hearthstone here. And then you're going to go do the bounties. So the bounty quests that are here, 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 and then turn it back in. I'm gonna take these all off so it doesn't get too cluttered. So Agmar's hammer, and then you have that fourth quest, right? Which is roughly here, somewhere in that area. Make sure that when you get this quest, don't just run back because you, you have your hearthstone here, right? So what I do is I run up here and I grab the flight path that's right here and then hearth back to here. Okay. So now we're here and there's the quest, the magical city of Dalaran. If you get that quest and you don't finish it 100%, like don't turn in the last point, you have a free teleport from here to here for your character's life, which is pretty sweet. Not you know, game breaking, but it's pretty nice. Um, so you're here. You just got the flight path from there. You just hearth here. Now use that quest and it will teleport you to Dalaran. And now you can set your hearthstone here. Okay. Now you should, if you followed my pathing, you should be able to take the flight path all the way back to here. Or, you know, you can get a summon but you're going back to the Nexus. You're going to the Oculus is what I do. 
So make your way to the Oculus. If you have two characters or if you have a buddy that can help summon you, you can, you know, pop a summon down and get summoned up there and save this last trip. But yeah, so from 75 onward, you're going to farm in here till 79. Oops. Okay, so it's fine. So we're here. Now you can hearth because you're probably going to be there for you know, a minute to get to 70 from 75 to 79. So we're going to be in Dalaran and you can fly down and then run down here, grab this flight path. And I think it's right here, this flight path. And I do rage mains flipper and then back and up over and get these flight path or get this flight path right here and then do the arena and then that should be 80. So now you get to do the fun part where you go back to town and buy you know 150 gold worth of skills and spec into your talents for the first time. So some additional tips as far as 75 to 80 goes. If you are unfamiliar with Oculus Farm, I do have a video that goes into it pretty in depth as far as strategies and all that good stuff. But the real, real uh, quick notes are A, the place is hard, okay? So be patient with yourself and make sure that you heal up in between each pole. Um, if you have a skinner, Make sure that you bring a skinner to this place. Like, pay yourself to level your own dude. You know what I mean? Like, if you're farming while you're, he's sitting there leveling, you're literally paying yourself to farm. Um, another thing, you don't have to just reset after the first wave. You can kill the boss. You can even get the drake, and you can go up and kill the first couple of waves up there. You know, those ones are harder in my opinion, than the waves that are down here. But if you're running out of instance locks, you can do that. Um, then, you know, when you're done farming the Oculus, you've got all your leather to sell. So you can get your guys some BOEs or whatever. Um, you know, start farming gold for a rush so you don't have to do this ever again or whatever you want to do. Um, I would highly encourage you to bring a Skinner as the power leveling person to the Oculus. So, uh, you know, Amphitheater of Anguish can also suck to do because of PvP. So if you find that you're struggling to, you know, get a good time to do it, try it when it's an off time and, you know, try your luck then. And then you get to do some cool things. If you multi-box and you have multiple characters that you level up, you could do rep farm four or five at a time. So that's another part about uh, multi-boxing or leveling multiple characters at the same time is rep farm. Once you get a team of characters going, you could do something cool like this. And this is my team. They're not super geared. They're about 4K gear score, the little boomies. But now I can do FOS, uh, normal and heroic. Um, it's not super easy, especially bosses like this where there's positioning involved like I have to position all of the guys so something something cool something maybe to aspire to I realize that I'm not like an elite elite person as you'll see here in my screen in just a moment I was very uh, lucky to be able to go to a uh, Bane Rush um, who uh, Gucci hosted that I'm sure that if you play on the server you probably have seen them around um, excellent excellent rush top-notch top quality, uh, no complaints at all. He was did an excellent job and um, super nice people. So definitely, uh, if you uh, need a boost, contact Gucci, you know, he, he's the man. <laughs> so, and then with the gold that I just made from leveling up these characters that you see here on the screen. So just from doing Oculus Farm for the three characters right here, I was able to afford a Bane Rush. So that's 75,000 gold in farming. 
that I paid myself to level up my characters. And now I level up, you know, I get to boost one of my own dudes and get him a ton of gear and achievements and all that good stuff. So I, I cannot recommend it enough. Um, definitely bring a Skinner and uh, try to try to think about things like that, like pay yourself to farm, you know? So I hope that this guide is useful to some people out there. If you need a Bane Rush, contact Gucci. <laughs> Uh, I was definitely super impressed. There was nothing but good things to say. It was absolutely amazing and it was actually pretty fun to just watch and relax at a raid for once and just get carried. It was so sweet. So sweet. <laughs> so uh, yeah, if you have any questions, comments, whatever, pop them down below, please. Uh, this is my first kind of in-depth guide like this. So if people want quests, names, that kind of thing. I don't think that's necessary with how quickly we level on warming. I mean, just go, you know, go by your gut a little bit. But uh, 75 to 80 is still, in my opinion, the worst part. Um, but we're seven times experience, so it's really not that bad. <laughs> um, get a get a Skinner, pay yourself, and then, you know, when you're done leveling, you'll be able to afford a Bane run. <laughs> So uh, anyway, have a great day and uh, let me know what your what your roots are. If you have a different route, I know a lot of people favor Scarlet Monastery, um, perf you know, over the route that I just suggested. So if you have, uh, you know, details or whatever, lay them on me. I would love to, to talk about this and maybe uh, try and like make the absolute perfect speed run of uh, of how to power level a dude. <laughs> so uh, anyway, have a great day and uh, thanks for watching.